Okay, next we'll explore the sheep brain mid-sagittal view. And here it is. So we've cut right down the midline of the brain, although we didn't actually cut any brain tissue until we got to right about here. This is the medial wall of the cerebral cortex, in this case the left hemisphere. So this was separated from the same medial wall of the right hemisphere by the longitudinal fissure, which we saw in the dorsal view. So I just took the knife and slid it right down in between the left and right hemispheres, right down that longitudinal fissure, until I got to this structure here. And that was the first tissue that I cut, except for the cerebellum over here. So this is the cingulate gyrus. Cingulum is the Latin word for belt. So this is kind of a belt-like gyrus on the medial wall of the cerebral cortex. It sort of surrounds the corpus callosum, shown right here. The anterior part of the corpus callosum is called the genu. Genu is a Latin word for knee. The posterior part is called the splenium or splenium. And then the part in the middle is called the body. The, the term corpus callosum itself means the tough body or the callous body. Corpus is body, callosum is tough. The name comes from the fact that it's a massive white matter tract composed of about 100 million axons in humans, much less than that in sheep. But and white matter is, uh, is tougher than gray matter, so it gets its name corpus callosum from the fact that it's really, really dense white matter. These axons, these 100 million or so axons, connect the gray matter of the right hemisphere with the gray matter in the left cerebral hemisphere. So each part of the cerebral cortex and even the subcortical structures in the left hemisphere has axons that connect that part of the brain to the same part of the cortex on the right hemisphere. Those axons make up the corpus callosum. Here's the fornix. You can see that it's also more white matter. It's part of a circuit that connects the hippocampus with the mammillary bodies and other structures in the brain. Here we've got the lateral ventricle. The empty spaces in the brain, filled with cerebral spinal fluid, are called ventricles. This one is the lateral ventricle. There's one on the left and the right. Here we've got the optic chiasm. You can see that it's white matter. This is where the left and right optic nerves meet in the middle and about half the axons from each of those nerves crosses the midline to the other side of the brain. Not too, not too far caudal to that are the mammillary bodies, which we saw in the ventral view. And then in between the mammillary bodies and the optic chiasm is the hypothalamus. Now in most specimens you won't have this little uh, divot here. Uh, this is from some overzealous students poking their probe into the, uh, the infundibulum, the opening into this ventricle here. Normally this would be a smooth surface right here. And that's the medial wall of the hypothalamus. So there's a, a narrow ventricle in between the left and right hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is important for lots of basic drives. Just dorsal to that is the thalamus. Hypo means below, so this is the hypothalamus lies just below the thalamus, circled in blue here. The thalamus is important for uh, relaying sensory information from all the senses except for smell up to the cerebral cortex. Different parts of the cerebral cortex are specialized for processing different senses, but all that sensory information makes kind of a, a pit stop here it gets relayed up to its specific part of the cerebral cortex. The part of the thalamus that crosses the midline, right here, where you can see the texture is a little bit different, this is the part of the thalamus that I actually had to cut uh, when I ran the knife down in between the two hemispheres. This surface here I didn't cut. This is a smooth surface where there was ventricle. The part of the thalamus that crosses the midline is called the massa intermedia of the thalamus. Just caudal to the mammillary bodies on the ventral surface of the brain is the cerebral peduncle. It's mainly white matter. You can see if you look at it, it's 
uh, mainly white matter, it's axons, carrying signals from the body up to the cerebrum and from the cerebrum down to the body and to the cerebellum. Just caudal to that is the pons. Also mostly axons, mostly white matter tracts. Uh, but there are some nuclei in the pons that help regulate your uh, sleep-wake cycle. Specifically, it helps initiate dreams during your sleep cycle. In the cerebral peduncle, there are nuclei that play an important role in uh, producing dopamine for different sorts of functions that we'll discuss later. Caudal to that is the medulla. Again, mostly axons, mostly white matter carrying information up and down the neural axis. Uh, but there are nuclei here, bundles of cell body, bodies that control uh, things like respiration, your breathing cycle. Now up here is the cerebellum. But now that we're looking at the cerebellum uh, on the inside, you can see its structure. You can see that it's surrounded by a cortex a thin layer of gray matter that's massively convoluted. It's a tremendous surface area, much, much more than the cerebral cortex. This cortex is called the cerebellar cortex, the cortex of the cerebellum. This is the cerebral cortex, the cortex of the cerebrum. And then underneath the cerebellar cortex is white matter and because of its structure, it's sometimes referred to as the arbor vitae, or tree of life, in Latin. Over here we have the pineal body, or the pineal gland. Uh, this is the part of the, the brain that uh, Rene Descartes thought was the seat of the soul, where the mind stuff interacts with the physical stuff of the body. Now we know that it's a gland that mainly makes melatonin which we'll learn later, play, plays an important role in your sleep cycle as well. Just caudal to that is the superior colliculus. This structure is important for planning and executing certain kinds of eye movements. And then inferior to that is the inferior colliculus. Uh, the inferior colliculus is part of the pathway for hearing. Colliculus means little hill. In between the cerebellum and the rest of the brainstem here is the fourth ventricle. Just an empty space that would have been filled with uh, cerebral spinal fluid in a, a living brain. The mid-sagittal view is a good spot to talk about some of the other ways that we divide up the brain. So here in green you can see I've circled the hind brain. The hind brain includes the medulla, the pons, and the cerebellum. Just anterior to that is the midbrain, circled in red here. There's the midbrain. It includes the cerebral peduncle and the superior and inferior colliculus. And then everything else is the forebrain, circled in blue here. This is the same view of the human brain. It's very, very similar. Uh, it's mainly its main differences are in its overall size and in the relative size of the cerebral cortex. We just have a lot more cortex than sheep do. And as a result, we also have a much, much thicker corpus callosum with many more axons than the sheep. Again, about 100 million axons in the human corpus callosum. If you were to zoom in on this, you'd just see millions of tiny little circles. Those are axons in cross-section, relaying information from different parts of the cerebral cortex in the left hemisphere over to more or less the same part of the cerebral cortex in the right hemisphere. Here is the uh, cingulate gyrus, which we've seen. Here's the genu of the corpus callosum, the splenium, and the, the long flat body in between. Here's the thalamus with the massa intermedia. Pineal gland would have been right about there. Superior colliculus, inferior colliculus. Here's the cerebral peduncle. All of this part together here is the midbrain, as you can see. Ventral to the thalamus is the hypothalamus. Right here you can see the optic chiasm, 
and then a little bit caudal to that, partly blocked by this arrow, are the mammillary bodies. Here we've got the pons, the medulla, and then the spinal cord. And you can see a little bit of the, uh, the arbor vitae in the cerebellum here.